All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And today I've decided to do a little car vlog because it's, uh, it's definitely been a while since I've done one. So I'm uh, just heading back home from school. I'm gonna get some lunch after this, but I just wanted to make a quick little video just to talk to y'all. Now, I say quick, but <laughs> no longer than 15 minutes, I promise. I hope. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about some things that's been going on. I guess kind of sort of personal life as well as youtube -y stuff. The main thing I want to talk to you guys today about is my recent stint as a video editor. I've been busy editing some of my friends' videos and podcasts, and it's been really fun for me. I'm just kind of looking at uh, making it just as my part-time source of income while I'm, in, while I'm in college. So I can't quite go full-time yet. But uh, I think at least making it part-time seems to be a pretty reasonable goal. And I know some of my friends actually do that. Some of them out in Japan, they, uh, they edit videos out there. Uh, I've been helping some of my friends out with videos and things like that. And while they're not quite able to pay me yet, uh, they are getting you know some more money through ad revenue and they're getting more money on Patreon. So that's definitely going to be a possibility very soon. Uh, if I can make at least 80 bucks a day for three days a week then I can uh, quit my job so I can do uh, the video editing and stuff well not full-time but part-time <laughs> and that way I can uh, do something I love to do and also still pay the bills and you know get some more time uh, working on homework and stuff like that so that way I don't have to come home being all sweaty and greasy and smelling a berg and uh, try to get a quiz out, so uh, it's happened to me a lot, doing stuff like that. So uh, that's the goal with uh, making video editing my uh, my part-time job. And it just turned green, oh man. <laughs> Can't even go because there's people ahead of me. Anyway, so, and I kind of see, you know, video editing as more of kind of my way of making it big on YouTube, quote unquote, because a lot of people, when they do stuff on YouTube, they kind of have this dream of, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of videos and do cool stuff. Once I hit a million subscribers, then I'll be able to quit my job and do it full time. Well, you know, in this day and age, you could actually do it a lot sooner than that, but I'd say uh, probably at least, you know, 100,000 is probably the good threshold to be able to do stuff full time, depending on your financial situation, of course, you know, maybe you live in a bigger house and you got family, kids, all that kind of stuff. So you may have to wait a little bit longer, but you know, for single peeps like myself, I'd say 100K is probably a good starting point for at least being able to quit your job and uh, make it on YouTube. But again, you gotta look at the finances, the AdSense, Patreon, wherever you're getting your money. So depending on how you're setting that up, you may be able to do it either sooner or later so anyway it all depends on your situation so where do I come in in this well the thing is with YouTube the way it's changing its algorithm and stuff like that a lot of people are being hurt by it but it's also creating new opportunities for uh, other people so like when most people think of making it big on YouTube or making a living off of YouTube they think of you know just doing their own videos just making a bunch of videos putting them out there and then waiting for the subs to roll in and subsequently the money to roll in from the ad revenue as well. And then that's how they do it. That's the traditional way of making money off of YouTube. Now, what I'm looking for is something a little off the, uh, the well-beaten path. So I see a lot of these algorithm changes as opportunities for me to utilize my skills in helping other YouTubers get big. So what I mean is um, I've been doing YouTube videos for going on 11 years now. Uh, March 1st of this year, 2017, will be my 11 year anniversary on YouTube. So I've been around for a while. And uh, I've been honing my skills and getting better and better every day with video editing and stuff. And uh, I think now I feel confident in offering my services to other YouTubers to help them uh, lighten the load a little bit with their editing. Now, originally when I thought of what a professional video editor is or what qualifications they should have, um, the reason I didn't pursue this sooner is because I figured that for a professional video editor, 
Uh, you need to know like all the cool whiz bang edits and know how to do like super awesome, you know, studio grade, you know, stuff you see in movies, sort of special effects and things like that. And you have to like know all the things pretty much in order to uh, even entertain the idea of being a professional video editor. And you know, there's obviously the traditional way of going up through the ranks in uh, in Hollywood. So becoming a production assistant, and then becoming like an assistant editor, then an editor, and then later moving up into more of a producer sort of role, and just doing it that way. And that's that's definitely a possibility for me too. I'm not ruling that out entirely. In fact, I would absolutely love to do something like that from the uh, from the TV side of the house. That would be awesome. But. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh, let's get a little bit more, a little bit more realistic here. So, I'm not saying it can't happen, but uh, I gotta kind of set myself up to uh, get myself there. So, the first step is becoming a YouTube editor. So, the awesome thing about YouTube is I don't have to be at a specific location. Like most of my clientele is actually in Japan, so they send me the video files through like Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. You know, they go to sleep, and I'm getting up, and after classes and stuff like that, I come home and I edit videos. So while they're busy sleeping, I'm busy editing the videos. So geographic dispersity actually works in our favor. So that way, while I'm sleeping, they're making videos, and while they're sleeping, I'm editing their videos. So it all just kind of works out. But that's not to say I wouldn't help out American YouTubers either. I'm just saying in that particular instance, it works. And, uh... Like I said, the beauty of YouTube is that you don't have to be in a certain geographic location to do things. So, I could do the same exact thing for YouTubers in, you know, Kalamazoo. I could do the same thing for YouTubers in Ohio, California, New York, Texas, all around the world and the country. So, um, as long as they can upload the videos to to like a Dropbox or a Google Drive or whatever the case may be, then I can get to work on them. So as long as you know we're able to maintain some sense of direction as far as like what they want me to do with editing the videos, and that, that falls onto communication between editor and creator. So that's something I've been really working on as well, even just between you know my friends and I. Learning how to work with clients, how to basically get what they want onto video, you know, maybe make some suggestions here and there. Uh, if they like it, you know, put it into effect. If not, then whatever. But it's all catering to what they want. You know, the customer comes first, you know, that sort of mentality. And it's definitely a different type of workflow. And I think, you know, with YouTubers, especially the ones I've been doing in a while, um, having somebody else edit their videos is a very, new experience for them. Sorry, there's a lady in front that's walking very slowly to the crosswalk. But anyway, um, having somebody else edit their videos is a very new experience for them. So they're not used to telling people how to edit things or how to communicate it properly. So um, it's by no means a very smooth process, but I think uh, kind of once I get you know the general gist of it down and once you know we develop a rapport and I see like some of their earlier videos I can get kind of a feel of what they want out of a YouTube video and once we get into a format and get a template and all that kind of stuff set up then it's really easy you just go in you cut the little bitty bits out slap on the color correction filter and dull up the audio and you're good to go but just because it's easy doesn't mean that you know, they shouldn't hire me. So the thing is, uh, and like I was saying earlier with the, with the algorithm with YouTube, uh, the YouTube algorithm has changed in such a way that a lot of people simply can't keep up with the demand for constant content all the time on YouTube because this whole era of the one-man show on YouTube, I believe, is, uh, is coming to an end because you know, especially for the ones that want to take it seriously and, you know, make a living off of it. Now, if you're just doing it for fun, then whatever, do your thing, you know, God bless. But for those of you who want to make a career out of it, or at least not work a full-time job while doing YouTube, 
then I think hiring staff is the way to go because it helps alleviate that pressure from you. It allows you to work more on your content or your branding or just simply hanging out with your family. You know, do whatever you want to do. It just frees up time for other YouTubers to do other things. So it allows them to be much more effective and it gives me a well-paying job. So, you know, we all win. And I think this isn't just limited to the big YouTubers because, I mean, a lot of the big YouTubers already have editors and stuff like that. They can hire, you know, in-house staff to do their videos. I think uh, the Game Grumps are a good example of that. Like, they've had, you know, when they first started out, um, well, originally, JonTron was the editor, but then he taught his, uh, his roommate, Barry, how to edit in, I think they were using Premiere at the time, so yeah. He taught him how to edit in Premiere, and you know, he became the editor, and then so on and so forth. But they've basically had like some sort of editing staff for them since essentially the beginning. <laughs> and so it's not by any means a new idea to become a YouTube editor and to offer one's services for editing YouTube videos, but it's, it's beginning to change from, you know, only the cream of the crop of YouTube of YouTubers can afford editors and I think it's going to become much more commonplace for channels of well, we'll say like 10k 20k and upwards what anyway <laughs> to uh, to hire uh, hire editors just to be able to keep up with the output of videos that the YouTube algorithm is demanding of its creators. And I kind of got the inspiration for this idea from a game theory video that MatPat put out talking about what's the problem with YouTube. And he pointed that out in that the YouTubers that are winning out of this are the ones that have like a full-time staff, like BuzzFeed and NewsFed, or SourceFed rather, sorry, um, and stuff like that. Videos that have a constant output of content that have a full-time staff that can shoulder the load, help take some weight off of the main creators, so that way they can create, and then they can edit and put out the stuff and do PR and whatever else they do. So that way they can be more effective as a unit. So I see that as the future of YouTube opportunities, rather than just, you can only be a YouTube creator and you have to have like a million subscribers in order to even entertain the idea of doing it full time. You know, I think those days have long since passed. And I think it's time to think a little outside the box as far as what it means to do YouTube full time. So, uh, let's see, where are we at here? Like 14 and a half minutes? See, I told you. It's gonna be around 15-ish minutes, probably a little less once I get around to uh, cutting this thing up. But, in the interest of keeping it short, short, <laughs> I'll just sign off here. So yeah, this is the Andy Sound. Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.